We had very useful discussions on a variety of topics as to how SDGs could be vehicles for improving entrepreneurship, agriculture practices, access to health and finance, and for a radical and how SKDRDP implemented these diverse projects successfully and examined if these efforts could be replicated by other NGOs inside and outside of India. We also had three electrifying interviews involving four eminent personalities. It is indeed so appropriate that this conference is being held in Bangalore and in Karnataka. As Mr. Surikumar C.J.M. Nabad was mentioning, it is in this state that more than three decades back, Mairada implemented a pilot project on savings and credit groups, envisioned by Mr. Alosius Fernandez, regarded as the father of SHG movement. A big hand to Mr. Fernandez. Success of the pilot project paved the way for linking the banks with the self help groups which has now become the world's biggest microfinance program with about 10 billion SHGs and nearly 120 members, bulk of them being women, and has led to their social, economic and financial empowerment of the poor. Karnataka can also take pride that the biggest SHG program in the country is in their state implemented by SKDRDP. I had the fortune of getting to know SKDRDP more than a decade back when I played a small role in authoring a book titled Development, Divinity and Dharma in which the authors discussed SKDRDP case study. There are several religious trusts which are working on education, health, and alleviation of poverty and hunger. Most of these institutions follow the rule of charity to help the poor. Very rarely, these trusts have either the inclination or the mission to provide support for stabilizing the and strengthening the livelihoods of the poor. SKDRDP is different. It strives to mitigate poverty by judiciously combining charity with sustainability. I am sure most of you remember how MFIs were growing one decade back. They were chasing numbers and growing at breakneck speed, throwing caution to wind. You are also aware of the consequences of such reckless financing. Though SKDRP also grew rapidly during that period, they were very principled and cared for the overall development of their client families and implemented various schemes of social development along with microfinance. <coughs> As a result, they were untouched by the crisis which rocked the MFI sector during 2010 to 2012. It is so important that the success story of SKDRDP is worth sharing, appreciating, and adopting. This conference is a step in that direction. I am tempted to compare SKDRDP to Brak in Bangladesh. I see a lot of parallels between these two great institutions. Both are comparable in terms of scale and the range of activities. Brag, established by Sir Abed, another visionary like Dr. Hegreji, is the biggest NGO in the world, present in 11 countries in Asia, Africa, and the Americas, touching the lives of millions of poor. Brag is globally recognized for its contribution to microfinance, graduation programs for the ultra poor 
social enterprises like dairy and food processing, retail handicraft marketing, seed and agro industries, schools, colleges, and even a university. I fondly hope SKDRDP will also be known soon outside Karnataka and outside India for their great contribution to the empowerment of the poor. I am given the task of summarizing the deliberations we had during the last three days and I will make a modest attempt. Let me begin with the inauguration. Larry Reed, Senior Fellow, Results Educational Fund, in his keynote address spoke about the transforming power of groups. This transformation becomes accelerated when the participants learn leadership skills that help them manage the groups on their own. He also talked about the gift of pain and said that the poor are the first and the worst affected of any problem. Therefore, it is the duty of the financial service providers who form self-help groups to learn, to listen to the poor and then to facilitate and help them to solve their own problems. The Honorable Finance Minister, while appreciating the great success of SKDRDP, stated that replicating and cloning SKDRDP model in all the states of the country is desirable, but success may come only if other states have committed visionaries like Dr. Hegde to lead the program. She stated that India has reached impressive numbers in terms of SHGs, but now it is time to lift the empowerment level of women to the higher plane. SHG members should transform to be entrepreneurs. The ambitious program of Mutra Loans, which has nearly 70% women entrepreneurs, is designed to encourage entrepreneurship. She stressed the need for financial service providers to have healthy partnership with banks and the government in implementing the Mudra scheme. We had a plenary on healthy enterprise creation. In the plenary on healthy enterprise creation, it came out that the three decade old SHG movement has no doubt provided easy access to credit and banking facilities to the poor people, helping them to smooth consumption besides improving their farms and business activities. In order to sustainably lift the poor above poverty, it is now essential to scale up this activity and promote micro enterprises. But this calls for higher level of planning, investment, management and funding. Probably the romantic phase of SHG development is over and now starts the difficult phase of developing entrepreneurship. In this important plenary session, the following recommendations emerged. Firstly, Prayas, the SIDBI scheme for providing entrepreneur loans to the missing middle has great potential to change the lives of millions. However, there is need for backing up these entrepreneurs with micro-insurance and training for building the capacity and change of their mindset. It is also important to handhold entrepreneurs for at least two years after they train. It is worth emulating SKDRDP in helping the clients to have multiple incomes so that they have continuous cash flow instead of depending on lumpy returns once or twice in a year due to their farming operations. Farm-based enterprises are easier to implement. Non-farm sector activities are being supported more with credit and less with technical inputs. The need for incubation, technical advisory and business management in these enterprises is very high. The skill and information deficit in relation to markets needs to be overcome. 
This was followed by an interesting interaction between Mr. H. R. Khan, former Deputy Governor of the Bank of India, and Mr. Tamal Pantopadhyaya, Senior Economic Generalist and Writer, took place. The discussion revolved around the progress of financial inclusion in the country and how it has affected the credit delivery mechanism for poor. It came out clearly that the country has achieved great outreach but with uncertain outcomes. There is also need for reducing the skewed geographic distribution of credit. Presently, the top 100 districts in the country receive 50% of credit, whereas the bottom 100 districts receive only 5%. This needs to be corrected. With digital technology introduced increasingly, the need for banking correspondence might come down. But Mr. Khan felt that it helps to continue with banking correspondence because there is need to have both technical and physical touch with the clients. However, with more and more technology coming, there is need for VCs to reinvent themselves through continuous ongoing training. Discussions during the session on a SG movement towards healthy farming community revolved around the ambitious target of doubling farmers' income by the year 2022. The following recommendations emerged in this session. As 85% of farmers in India are small and marginal, it is necessary to develop technologies suited for such farmers to bring down the cost of cultivation. Customer hiring centers so popular in Karnataka should proliferate in the country to help small and marginal farmers to introduce mechanized agriculture. More and more joint liability groups of farmers to be formed to disseminate technology to small farmers. It should be ensured that farmers are not required to sell their produce at prices below MSB. Suitable mechanisms should be developed to predict very interesting recommendation. Suitable mechanisms should be developed to predict market prices. Price forecasting will help to protect farmers' income. Farmers' collective should be strengthened. More and more educated persons should come up, take up farming in, in our country. In, in the session on SHG movement towards improved health and risk mitigation, a strong pitch was made to increase coverage of life and health insurance for the poor. It was also felt that entrepreneurship can never flourish if the client is not healthy. Therefore, it makes business sense for microfinance institutions to promote health of their families, client families. This can be done by introducing health education, health financing, and linkages to health-related products and services. There are already models for this and microfinance institutions take advantage of the existing success stories of integrating health and microfinance. Building policies and beliefs. We had a thrilling session yesterday in which audience were spellbound. Mr. Tamal Pandhopadhyaya very skillfully interviewed Dr. Hegde and Dr. Hande on various issues related to dharma, divinity and development. Issues discussed included secularism, religion, nationalism, role of parents in guiding the children and a variety of topics. In the session on SHG movement towards access to finance, we heard the perspective of Nabad, a successful small finance bank, Ujjivan, the biggest RRB in the country, and Sadhan, the network of development financial institutions. Besides the emotional journey of Shailaja, a successful SAG member. In the keynote address of this session, Larry Reed stressed the need to know the results of what we have been doing, such as how many members, SAG members, have come sustainably above poverty, how many children are in the school, what is the health status of the SAG families. These are some of the impact 
characteristics we should be knowing because out of our activity and promoting self, self and groups. Dialogue with Dr. Rangarajan. We had an opportunity to listen to the views and thoughts of Dr. C. Rangarajan, a renowned economist who occupied several distinguished positions, including that of Governor RBI. This session was facilitated by Professor Shiram, who is a known figure for the microfinance community. Dr. Rangarajan opined that the country's response to banking problems has always been creating newer institutions. This, is, this in a sense may be all right, considering the need for serving a broad spectrum of people and diverse geographies of the country. Coming to the issue of interference by the government in the banking system, he felt the interest rates in microfinance are now reasonable and therefore government need not be meddling with that. Rather, government should be providing technology inputs, marketing facilities and help poor clients to stabilize their income. He also felt that as a regulator, the central bank need not be too intrusive in their guidelines. It is more important that RBI concentrates on appropriate supervision, consumer protection, and prudent lending. Mr. Rangarajan felt strongly that financial inclusion is no longer an option for the country, but a compulsion. In the session on movement towards cashless economy, it emerges that SSG should be one of the biggest platforms to implement digitization across the country and rapidly scale up the economy. Interesting recommendations emerged from this session. Digitization of SSG processes is desirable because it helps in six ways, namely cost, convenience, coverage, connectivity, customer acquisition, and convergence. It helps if all the microfinance players, be it NBFCs, SHPIs, small finance banks, if all of them join hands to, de to derive synergy, which would help to innovate and application of new technology. Regulating agencies should be proactive and make sure institutions are able to introduce risk mitigation measures to protect themselves against fraud, hacking, etc. NABAD should upscale the e Shakti program to all the districts and all the states as soon as possible. In the session on SSG movement towards healthy family, we heard different NGOs about their social welfare programs. SKDRDP has proven that it is possible to operate a financial service with high efficiency and productivity without grant support. They have also shown that finance alone will not work the magic. It is important that all other accompanying measures should also be delivered along with finance. Having learned so much about SKDRDP, there is a strong need felt among the participants that SKDRDP should take on itself the responsibility to educate other NGOs in other states and even outside the country, particularly where penetration of financial services is still low. This could be done with or without adopting SKDRDP model. SKDRDP should become a resource institution that designs, guides, and monitors rural development activities aimed at lifting the poor out of poverty. All the state governments and the government of India should closely study the SKDRDP model and try to emulate the same in their financial inclusion efforts, <coughs> particularly through National Rural Livelihood Mission. Introduction of the BCBF model by the Reserve Bank of India has enabled the NGOs to approach banks and link the SSGs to the banks for credit and other financial services. SKDRDP and Cash Core Microcredit have successfully used the BCBF model and are sustainable even while lending at very affordable rates. 
There's need for replicating the BC model elsewhere, particularly for those quality NGOs and even SHG federations who have been promoting, nurturing, and linking SHGs to banks. They are starved of funds, which is coming the way of their growth. It's indeed a very good news that SKDRDP will be establishing an international incubation center which will mentor small NGOs from within the country and outside for microcredit and energy financing. I wish SKDRDP and SELCO all the best in their effort. Thank you very much.